I've taught and trained body weight strength and skill for 30 years in a few months. And I've built everything from handstands to muscle ups to flares to flips, which requires the development of total body strength, flexibility, skill, power, and sustainability. Not only for myself, but for kids all the way up to 40, 50, even 60 year olds and beyond. And I formulated a 10 step plan to turn people of any age, level, or background into a total body master. This process will help you learn how to go way beyond mere fitness and start actually training which will catapult you to a whole new level and whether you like it or not whether you know it or not you are already a body weight strength and skills practitioner it's just what level are you at personally how well can you move how strong skilled and most importantly sustainable are you how well can you run jump vault roll climb fall yes fall balance strike and flow if you can't sit and listen for a couple of minutes to all this knowledge I'm going to give you for free, I'm afraid you're not going to make it. I'll even give you a quick breakdown of the entire industry of fitness in 15 seconds so you can save $15,000, okay? Eat food that grows, plants, animal sources, drink water. I like soda water. Strength, five reps and lower for max strength and power. 10 plus reps for hypertrophy and adding bulk. And then add cardio and stretching. Easy, 15 seconds. But then come the plateaus, injuries, and setbacks. So we must go beyond mere fitness. Five round couplets of push, pull, bent arm, straight arm, legs, five, 10, even 50 plus reps for conditioning muscle, connective tissue, body, and even mind. Then skills. A bench press is a skill. So is a handstand and a back handspring. The more skills you learn, the stronger and smarter you become. Combine these into Dynacombos and Katas. Then flexibility, one to 10 minute holds, solo or in group. Now let's go into detail. So there's about 10 steps to total body mastery, including both how to actually think like a total body master and then how to train like one, including the strength, flexibility, skill, mobility, and sustainability. I'm gonna teach you it all. It's around 10 steps, but they flow into each other and will tie together at the end of the video. And if you don't know the steps at the end of the video, you can apply the details I'm going to teach you from the start. So the end is just as important as the beginning. To learn body weight strength this skill, you also have to learn patience, perseverance, discipline, focus, and how to have fun. Yes, fun. The first step I want to teach you about total body mastery is the concept of training. Without this, you won't even get to level one. Most people don't understand it and then they revert back to low tier mainstream gimmicks like weightlifting or cardio, or they label it something that it isn't, like gymnastics, animal movement, yoga, CrossFit, calisthenics, or Ninja Warrior. It isn't any of that stuff that injures people physically and psychologically. If it makes them feel cooler, okay. And listen, it's not the dreaded F word, fitness. That's like fast food level stuff. Honestly, none of the labels even really make a difference, okay? It's about building strength, flexibility, mobility, power, speed, and sustainability sustainability simultaneously measured by skills and realizing at the end of the day you don't even survive at all you can't even be healthy and strong and tap into your greater potential if you don't train and build greater body weight strength and skill now i'm going to teach you a certain type of total body mastery that we call power batics i prefer this because it's goal oriented skills based training an example of non-goal oriented, non-skills based training, in my opinion, this might seem extreme, but I don't want you to fall into this trap, is what I call the plateau of mediocrity. It's almost unethical and I've seen people do it for decades. What happens is people in the health, medical, education, and fitness industries sell and teach things to the masses that keep them in a constant state of mediocrity or even lower than that. And people eat it up like manna falling from heaven when it's really the low budget canned meat given to the slave in Egypt. That's a biblical reference, just so you know. Examples include, and I know this is gonna make some people mad, but everything from tax-funded textbooks used in public schools to free and cheap workout courses peddled online by oiled up fitness celebrities. Look around, this is why you don't see the majority of the people with abs and handstands. You see the opposite. People running the hamster wheels in the gym, just like they are in life. 
lifting the same old weights, doing yet another push-up with hamstrings as tight as violin string, whining about age with a mind of negativity and a body that reflects it. There's two forces at work here. The people at the top selling the garbage to the masses and the rest of the people choosing to accept it like it's their only option. I'm gonna be blunt, all right? You choose to be where you are, physically, mentally, financially. It's all our own responsibility, me included. But I see all this stuff in our world and I just have to say enough is enough. To the best of my ability as a simple human being, I choose to live to my fullest potential and I try my best to help others to do that too. And the best body masters in the world train like how I'm gonna show you. And then you'll have it sustainably long-term. One of our students came from trying all these programs. I don't really like naming things and throwing particular people under the bus, but he tried all these courses and programs. I'm sure you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. And he said that it just didn't take him anywhere. And his story is similar to many other students we've had and probably millions or billions of other people. I taught my first martial arts session at 14 years old with no teaching experience. I was like, oh, uh, okay, you want me to teach, all right. But I followed the system and it was a good session. And for almost 30 years now, I've learned, grown, and built better, more efficient systems that scale my own and others' training into advanced skills like handstands, muscle ups, flares, flips, and so much more that you see in all of our other videos. I think today this word training is not used enough. And initially you might even reject it, but write it down. It's key to real progress, sustainability, especially like power batics. You don't just work out. You train to advance to level one, then level two, then level three, and on and on and on with sustainability long-term. It's the difference between a hamster wheel and an elevator. And that's the second step I'm gonna teach you leveling up with sustainability. So you have this situation you're currently at. The first thing you need to do is take some time to find your baseline. Now, if you're just sitting on the couch, that's not your baseline. If you're working out daily and making improvements, that's not your baseline either. The way you know your baseline is that you'd mistake it for a plateau, but a plateau actually involves a lower starting point and then a higher level goal. Remember, it's goal-oriented skills-based training. Powerbatics. So the workouts feel boring. You feel like you're not getting anywhere, like you're stuck. You're not injured or sick or anything, but you feel like you're just at this point. I'll tell you this, most people quit at this point because they don't understand what's going on. And a small fraction of people keep doing it, but it doesn't take them anywhere. And then they say that it, they're just too old or whatever. When I was learning Hebrew in Bible college, my professor said, learning a new language is like walking through fog. The more you learn, the more the fog clears and it starts to make sense. But are people learning when they're quote unquote working out? No, not really. They're just performing the actions, which is fine, but you have to learn in order to grow. So you get to this point that you think is a limit, but it's not. You just don't know what lies ahead. This is where faith in the future and belief in yourself comes in and only train in that way. You hear other people saying other things or selling shiny objects, just steer clear of all that nonsense, all right? And you just train. So you've got three things to do here. Identify your targets, your goals, find your baseline, and then train with belief in yourself. Here's a quick assessment you can do right now to identify your baseline. Pushing strength. Can you do a solid push-up? If so, do a frog stand. If so, press that to a handstand. Pulling strength. Can you hang from the bar? Can you do a solid pull-up? A muscle-up? Core. Can you lift your hips off the floor and touch your face to your knees in an L hip lift? Can you do an L stand? A V stand? And then the legs. Can you do a horse stance one minute long? Or a leg iron cross? But those are a few that I like to use to assess new students. Now, third step for total body mastery, and I think that this is the glue that holds it all together. But the third step is to find your own style. I've seen tall, old, short people with past injuries, stiff, uncoordinated, all sorts of people, they gain total body mastery. The key is finding your own style. Now, don't mistake style for your comfort zone or something easy, that's not what I'm talking about. For example, look at these five elements of power batics. Having a few different aspects to training actually keeps things new and fresh. Plus, they all connect together like Voltron and reinforce the strength, flexibility, and skill from the others. But let's say of hand balancing, ninja strength, power moves, cirque, and free run, the type of training that you're most inclined to is ninja strength like Che and Venny, some of our students. Certain personality types actually gravitate towards certain kinds of training. All right, I won't say stubborn, 
but more determined, highly focused, control oriented. Those are the kind that are more inclined to ninja strength. People who train through pain, don't give up, and need to be coached on how to rest and actually address weak links. And other personality types are drawn to the other elements. So you might be naturally inclined towards one element, but that doesn't mean the training won't be brutal. You've got to rebuild weak links. You've got to overcome past boundaries, all that stuff. Like doing 100 stalder pulses because your hips are tight and weak, and 100 bridge push-ups because your upper back doesn't bend and your shoulders are ready to snap. And this leads to step four, differentiated training. When you reach this step, you are really training because you are starting to realize that everything relates to everything else. And so you branch out to other aspects of training that reinforce your own style. So let's say you're training in ninja strength. Here's a deal. You might be getting stuck. Maybe it's those tight hips, back, and shoulders. But if we crossed over into hand balancing to start to unlock undiscovered potential that you already have, then that carries back over into ninja strength. For example, the stalder pulses and bridge push-ups I just mentioned will simultaneously help you build a stalder press handstand from the hand balancing element while providing the core strength and mobility that'll help you unlock the straddle front lever in ninja strength. And both of these moves will give you incredible core strength that your spine will be reinforced and likely protected against lower back pain. What's more is that you can start working on these moves right now, regardless of your age or level. This is exactly how Alex, a PhD student in her 20s, and Patrick, an attorney in his 60s train, and how break dancers, martial artists, and even circus performers train. This level of strength, skill, and sustainability isn't just for them. It's not just for the elite performers. It's for all humans. And this leads to step five, which includes the rules of training. And they are teachable. And I don't know why they don't teach you this or anything else worthwhile in school. Well, I think I know why. They don't want you to be strong physically or mentally. But I know for a fact there are three little details, three little rules that if you follow these, you'll build total body mastery. Most people start with the last step first, like trying what we call a pinnacle move, like a front lever or a muscle up or a stalder press handstand. And then they're like, well, I can't do this. Of course you can't. It's like jumping straight to the final level of Super Mario Brothers, but you don't even know how the buttons work. There's levels there for a reason and you have to learn how everything functions along the way without dying. Like this, the basic buttons are just like hanging from a bar with the straight legs and straight feet holding a proper push-up position with a rounded back and hollow core and a horse stance for a couple of minutes. Rule two is you don't stay there, which 99% of fitness and health will do to you. Just keep you on that plateau of mediocrity. You have to advance. Rule three is filling in the weak links as you advance. Don't just practice your favorite things, but do practice what you don't want to practice because that's your weak link. Otherwise, you're just going to get stuck or hurt. And this leads to step six, which is practice. Eventually, training turns into something new, practice. I remember calling up friends and asking, want to go practice? We'd get together and do flips, power moves, and then grapple. It's way beyond working out, and it's beyond training. It's the recurring reinforcement of trained skills so that it becomes an intrinsic part of who you are as an individual. An example is what we tell students who are learning flares. Flares are an excellent way to build massive core and upper body strength, flexibility, mobility simultaneously, even just doing the around the world and at any age, 40s, 50s, 60s. But once people start attempting singles, then I mentioned that it will take about 3,000 repetitions to get continuous flares, and then you have them. It's this repetitive problem-solving practice that makes it an intrinsic part of you. Step seven, don't focus on the results. Do not look at the scale. Do not count the calories. Don't even look in the mirror. Focus on the skills. Now, sometimes you do have to track progress. If you need to lose weight, if you need to build muscle, you've got to track that in one way, shape, or form. But that is by no means the end all be all. We want to get lean. Sometimes we want to put on muscle, but we're not staying there. And that is not the goal in and of itself. Either you're a degree closer to a planche or not. Either you can do 10 flares or you're at nine. Either you can get a handstand or you don't. Even nutrition is a skill because it's physical action. Either you're choosing real food from a growing source or you're eating processed garbage from a plastic bag. And don't be obsessive. People at the gym see me grab a piece of candy or a couple of chips because my stomach is growling and I've been out all day. But bison chili with beans and bell peppers await at home for dinner on top of solid training and fun activities throughout the day. 
Thinking this way will reorient your mind to be productive and to be positive and to have good thinking habits that completely transform your body and your life. The physique, but what's more, the health, strength, skill, and sustainability that really makes a life good will become the byproduct. There's many a bodybuilder, crossfitter, physique obsessed individual who's angry, agitated, grumpy, can't move well. You don't want to be in that camp. Step eight, belief. This one might seem obvious, but I'm surprised how many people don't do it. Only train in a way that you believe in. I don't believe in sitting cooped up on a bicycle hunched over the handlebars for hours, so I don't do it. I don't believe in running endless miles for the sake of running endless miles, so I don't do it. I don't believe in obsessively nitpicking over form while lifting bars with hundreds of pounds of metal plates attached to it over and over for hundreds of millions of reps over the course of a lifetime, so I don't do it. I believe acquiring new strength and new skill makes you stronger and smarter, so I do that instead. But you have to genuinely believe in it. If you don't, you won't put the right kind of work and effort into it, and it will be of no value to you. But if you do, your training will be absolutely priceless, beyond the value of even the most expensive car or house. And it starts with belief, which leads to step nine, train like a child. A very famous quote goes like this, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. I think Jesus's statement can be applied to many things in life, especially your physical training. A child just takes things for granted. They believe, they don't worry, full of excited, enthusiastic faith with wonderful, curious anticipation for what's next. This mindset gets crushed by family, quote unquote friends, public school, jobs, negative people, and one's own choices through life. But that mindset is still in there. We must simply tap into it to allow it to light us back up. And how does that training look? They just go and go and go, and they stop when they want and then they go some more. Sometimes they need to be pushed. Sometimes they need to be directed. But ever see their eyes light up whenever they unlock something new? That's what you need. I remember when I did a one-arm handstand for like 10 seconds. It was like, wow, cool. It just clicked and it was like just this simple joy. And this leads all the way to step 10 which is the most critical. After decades of training, practice, and teaching students, after going through injuries, putting pressure on myself, dealing with multi-year recoveries, at the end of the day, the very most important thing is having fun. Fun with family, fun with friends, and fun within ourselves, in our own mind, and in our own training. I must admit, this took a long time for me to learn, and many a fire I walked through to get there but it's worth everything. And it cannot be fully and completely understood without the other nine steps. And it's not mere Epicurean selfish fun. It actually manifests into the most fun when you help others unlock this strength and skill. And this reinforces the cycle of our own individual training, the nine steps, and the 10th, which is the fun, the joy. So yes, training will be brutal. It is a lifelong journey. It builds patience, perseverance, discipline, and focus, but it's also fun. And that's what I've learned in 30 years, but it's not everything, and I'm still learning. So go dive deeper, subscribe, and use the link to unlock a free training, very in-depth student stories, email trainings you can read, and to connect with me and my team. See you in the next video and in training soon.